let's be real. Most web design tutorials either start with fancy layouts or overwhelm you with tools before teaching you how to think. This one's different. In just about 15 minutes, you will learn how to plan, design, and build a clean, purpose-driven WordPress website using Elementor, no code, no fluff. We'll cover how to map your layout with AI, lock in your color palette, build a home page that actually converts, make it look great on mobile, and keep it lightning fast. Now here's my goal with this course. I want you to get to the point where you can build simple websites confidently, maybe even take on your first client or finally launch that personal project you've been sitting on. Let's get into it. Chapter 1, Design Starts with Purpose, Not Layout. Before you open WordPress, before you track anything in Elementor, you need to answer one question. What's the point of this website? Not what it looks like, not what color it uses. What is it for? Because good web design isn't about making things pretty. It's about guiding someone to take action. So let's define the purpose. Start with this. Is the site meant to get leads, book appointments, sell a product, showcase your work, or just build trust for now? Next, who is it for? Are they complete strangers, existing customers, warm leads already halfway sold? This matters because your tone, structure, and call to action should match their level of awareness. Someone who's just browsing needs more convincing than someone who's already looking to buy. One pages work great for simple lead gen or landing pages. But if you're planning a blog, service pages, or a portfolio, a multi page site is the way to go. Let's wrap up with a quick example. Here are two websites with the exact same layout, same hero, same section, same everything. One is built for a local dentist, the goal, appointments. The other one is for design agency, the goal, get demo calls. If both use vague headlines like welcome to our website or we bring ideas to life, they fail. But if they start with, need a dentist in downtown Chicago, book a visit today. See how we redesigned 20 plus SaaS websites that doubled conversions? Same layout, totally different result. Because purpose shapes clarity and clarity drives conversion. If you skip this part, your design might look great, but it won't work. Chapter 2, Wireframing with Elementor AI Site Planner. We're going to use the Elementor AI Site Planner to wireframe everything. This tool helps you map out the pages and content before you even start designing, which is great because it keeps you focused on the strategy instead of getting lost in colors and fonts too early. Here's how it works. Head to the Elementor Site Planner and start a new project. When it asks what kind of site you're building, type something like restaurant websites with online reservations and menu browsing. Elementor's AI will generate a rough site structure, usually with a home page about page, menu, and contact or reservation page. You can tweak or remove anything that doesn't fit. For example, maybe we don't need a blog page. We can delete that, but we do want a page for private events because this restaurant also hosts small gatherings. Once you're happy with the layout, download the zip file Elementor gives you. We'll use that in chapter 4 when we start building the actual page builder. Let's move on to the next chapter and translate the strategy into an actual design direction. Chapter 3, finalizing design direction plus color palette. Okay, now that we've got a solid wireframe based on the real user goals, it's time to make some design decisions. This is where a lot of people start randomly picking fonts or changing button colors every five minutes. But if you've worked with a client or you're building it just for yourself, you should already have some inputs. Let's say our restaurant owner tells this, we want the website to feel warm, premium, but still approachable. Think candlelit dinner means neighborhood favorite. Perfect, that's not a style guide but it's enough to work with. Step one, translate the vibe into design language. To make this easier, we'll use a tool like coolers.co to generate a palette. You can either start from scratch or input a primary color, like a dark red for that rich, romantic vibe, and let the tool build complementary colors around it. Aim for one primary, one to two neutral, and one accent color for buttons or highlights. Log that palette in, we don't want to keep tweaking colors in chapter 6 when the client suddenly feels like going a bit more orange. This is the moment you finalize it. Step 2, set your typography rules. Let's pick two fonts. One for heading, one for body text. Google fonts work great for this. For headings, maybe something with a little personality like Playfair display. For body copy, something super readable like Inter or Open Sans. Decide on size hierarchy now. Headline, for example, at 48 pixels, subheading at 28 pixels, body at 16 pixels, CTA text at 18 pixels bold. These sizes aren't set in stone, 
but they'll keep your layout consistent and save you from decision fatigue later. Step 3. Document everything. Even if you're the only person working on this, create a quick visual reference. Your palette with hex codes, typography stack, button styles, CTA rules, this becomes your mini design system and it'll speed up the build in chapter 4 like crazy. Step 4. Get your thoughts straight. Now that we've logged in our direction, it's time to bring it to life in Elementor. Let's start building in chapter 4. Chapter 4. Building the home page. We're building a home page for a busy local restaurant that wants two main things. Let people serve tables online, help customers pre-decide what to order. And thanks to our earlier work, we're not starting from a blank canvas. We've got the Elementor AI site planner zip we exported in chapter 2. Step number 1. Set up the page. Head into the WordPress dashboard and import the zip file we generated. I recommend doing this in a fresh WordPress install so you're basically starting from scratch. This drops in our entire framework structure and all the sections are ready to style. Step 2. Build section by section. We'll start from the top and move down. And remember, we're not just filling it in. We're making design decisions based on everything we've planned. Let's complete the hero section first. Use a full width background image, maybe the restaurant interior or a cozy dining table. If needed, throw a black overlay on the image to boost contrast. Add a short headline like book your table, skip the wait. People already know how good and busy the place is. Subhead with a quick value proposition, instant reservations and easy pre-ordering. Instead of a button, let's embed a reservation form right here using Elementor form widget. Pro tip, you can get this for free using Elementor HelloBiz theme. I'll keep the form simple for least amount of friction, name, phone number, date, time, number of guests and order preferences. Next, menu preview section. Embed a gallery or link to a PDF or downloadable menu. I would recommend high quality images as they seem more authentic and natural. Now let's add a social proof section. Add two to three quick testimonials from happy diners. Place a strong CTA again here. Book your table with a bold button. The CTA links back to the form we placed earlier. Step three, use your guide right. Everything we set in chapter three, your colors, fonts, spacing, now comes into play. To save time, Set your global colors and fonts in site settings under Elementor. Use the same padding or margin values for each section. It keeps the flow tight and saves hours of fiddling. Step number four, add visuals smartly. Use food photography or ambience shots, not stock images of pizza that don't match the actual menu. And remember, visuals should enhance clarity, not compete with your content. Quick tips, use the navigator panel to stay organized. Duplicate style sections if you need similar blocks. Use the responsive mode preview frequently. We'll cover mobile tweaks in the next chapter. Chapter 5 Designing for Mobile First. Alright, so our homepage is looking solid on desktop. But here's the reality most of your traffic will come from mobile, especially for local businesses like restaurants. In fact, over 60 to 80% of visitors will check out the site from their phone. If it doesn't load fast, look clean, and let them take action easily, you're losing money. Step 1. Open Responsive Mode in Elementor. Inside the Elementor editor, click the Responsive Mode icon at the top and switch between desktop, tablet, and mobile view. We're going to start with mobile because that's where most of the real world use happens. Step number 2. Tweak your typography and spacing. Resize text. Headlines might look great on desktop, but on phone, they'll dominate the screen. Spacing. Check your padding and margin. What felt roomy on a wide screen might feel suffocating on mobile. Reduce padding and stack content more compactly, but still give each section space to breathe. Font sizes. Keep body text around 16 pixels to 18 pixels. Headings can be 24 to 32 pixels depending on importance. Step number three, stack elements in a logical order. Two to three column sections, collapse them into stack blocks on mobile. Elementor does this by default, but check manually, especially for menu items, benefits, or testimonials. Images. Make sure they scale properly. Avoid fixed widths. Use percentage or full width and don't crop important visuals just to make things fit. Navigation. If you're using a sticky header, make sure the logo and menu don't hog too much vertical space. And make sure your menu icon hamburger is clear and functional. Step number four, prioritize tap targets. Your users are using thumbs, not a mouse. Buttons and form fields need to be big enough to tap easily. Leave enough vertical spacing between clickable elements so people don't tap the wrong thing. Don't make your CTA or form the last thing they see. 
Bring it near the top, even on mobile. Step number five, rewrite or rearrange if needed. Here's a pro tip most people skip. Don't just shrink content, restructure it. If something feels clunky on mobile, rewrite it. Shorter headlines, more scannable copy. Sometimes you'll even want to reorder sections so the most important stuff hits first. For example, on mobile, you might want the reservation form before the menu preview because that's what most users came for. Elementor makes it easy to duplicate a section, hide one on desktop and keep the other visible only on mobile. Once that's done, we move on to the next most critical factor, performance. Chapter 6, Performance Optimization. Here's the thing, even a beautiful mobile-friendly website is useless if it takes forever to load. In fact, studies show that if your site takes longer than 3 seconds to load, most people will just bounce. And for local businesses, that's lost bookings, lost orders, lost trust. So in this chapter, we're going to speed things up using Airlift, a free speed optimization plugin that's incredibly easy to set up. Step number one, why speed matters. Faster sites rank better in Google. They convert better, especially on mobile. And they reduce bounce rate, which means most people stick around long enough to actually book or order. Step two, install Airlift. Head to Airlift's website, enter your URL, Download the plugin and install it on your WordPress dashboard. Airlift is built to be beginner friendly, no technical setup, no coding, no fluff. A few extra things you can do to push performance even further. Compress images using tools like TinyPNG before uploading. Limit your use of heavy animations, especially background videos. Avoid bloated plugins that add unnecessary scripts. Use Elementor's built-in performance settings to disable features you don't need. This chapter might not be the flashiest part of the course, but it's one of the most important. Chapter number seven, final polish, forms, plugins, and go live checklist. At this point, your site looks great, works on mobile, and loads fast. Now let's make sure it's functional, secure, and actually usable for real visitors. Step number one, add a working contact or reservation form. We already placed a form in the hero section. Now let's make sure it actually works. In Elementor, Click on the form widget, go to actions, enter the restaurant's email in the email to field. If the client wants to manage reservations with a third party system like OpenTable or Zomato, you can embed the widget instead. Bonus tip, always test the form by submitting it yourself and confirming it arrives in the inbox. Step number two, essential plugins. Here's a lean plugin stack I would recommend for every site. Rank Math SEO or Yoast helps you add meta titles, descriptions and schema. Malcare protects against brute force and bot attacks. Blog Vault automatically backups to Google Drive or Dropbox. Airlift, you already have this, but make sure it's enabled on all pages. WP Mail SMTP ensures form emails actually deliver. Keep it light, more plugins is equal to more chances to break stuff. Step number three, go live checklist. Fevicon uploaded, meta titles and descriptions set for all pages, test your forms on desktop and mobile, Check all links and buttons, no dead ends. Double check mobile layout on a real phone. Run a final speed test on the home page. Disable coming soon mode if you've used one. Bonus, if you're handling the site to a client, record a five minute loom walkthrough, showing them how to manage bookings or update content. But we're not done yet. In the final chapter, I'll show you how to turn this into a reusable template kit so you can scale your process and build sites faster for future clients. Chapter 8 bonus, build a usable template kit. With Elementor, you can package everything into a template kit. Your sections, pages, global styles, and even header or footer. Let's do that. Step number one, save individual sections as templates. First, go through your home page and save every core block. Right click any section and click on save as template. Give it a clear name like hero restaurant, menu preview three columns, or testimonial block light PG. These save blocks can be pulled into any page or project later with just one click. Use this especially for hero sections, CTA blocks, FAQ or benefit sections, contact forms. Step two, export the entire page as a template if you want to save full pages. Just click on save as template here and save it. Now you can go back to your dashboard and click export template. Save this file somewhere safe. You can import it into any WordPress site running Elementor and have a fully working page in seconds. Step number three, when to use template kits. If you're freelancing or building for clients, use template kits for industry specific layouts, scaling your agency work, one base kit, infinite variations, and we're all done. 
This is how you go from just learning web design to working like a pro. You're not just stuck in the blank canvas loop anymore, you've got a process. Thanks for following along. If this crash course helped, consider subscribing for more tutorials like this and hey, go build something great, you're ready. Click here if you want to triple your site speed in just one minute. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Click here and I'll see you there.